By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Tibby Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at an old school magic match between Urnum on Ice, the deck you've seen on this channel before. It's strong, it's fierce, it's being played by Yoop, and he's taking on my Timmy's Plane deck. So that's a deck that revolves around Living Plane and Prodigal Sorcerer. Now before I start with the deck deck section of this video, I would like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this section of the video. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And um, you can also find information in that same description about the rule set. We're playing Swedish old school magic rules today. And also there's a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you're not a patron yet, please consider becoming one. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the info. Okay, and now that that is all out of the way, I'm going to start with the deck decks. We're first going to have a look at the deck of Joop Ernum on Ice. And here we see the deck Ernum on Ice by Joop. And this deck... I mean, it's just really good. It's a difficult deck to play against because it's got so many weapons. I think the first weapon of the deck is Tempo, right? We see four Llanowar Elves, we see a Birds of Paradise, we see the Moxon, we see the Black Lotus, the Soul Ring. All that helps Yoop to kind of cast his creatures early, his spells early. So if he's got a turn one Llanowar Elf, then he can do a turn two Ice Storm, which means that he destroys a land of the opponent, you know, giving him a tempo advantage. And he already has a tempo advantage because he's got a mana dork. So he's got a mana extra already. And when he destroys a land, he even has two mana extra. And what does he want to do with that advantage? He wants to play out Urnum Jin early, Sarah Angel early. At the same time, he wants to control the board with Swords to Plowshares and Disenchant and kind of, you know, dominate uh, what's happening. Now, one of the dangers, of course, of these type of decks when you go so quickly is that you can empty your hand. And that's also why he's playing with two Sylvan Libraries. If he can find a Sylvan early, he will probably use it pretty aggressively to kind of uh, keep having cards in hand. So he will gladly trade life for cards in hand so that he can just keep putting pressure on the opponent. And of course, there's also that element of the blue power and the Brain Geyser. So Brain Geyser is actually the only card in the deck with a double blue. He also has Sarah Angels with double white. But when you look at his blue sources, I mean, I think he's got more than enough to cast a Brain Geyser. Plus, a Brain Geyser you want to cast later in the game when probably you have more mana uh, to your disposal right so i think in this case the brain geyser double blue is not going to be a problem of course he's also playing ancestral recall and a card like time walk is also very powerful in this deck because his deck is creature heavy because when you're looking at his list at the end of the day what he wants to do is he wants to win through combat damage right and that's one of the things i like about this deck it wants to win you know kind of fair through combat damage and when you want to win through combat time walk is really good because it gives you an extra uh, combat step basically so i think time walk is really good in this deck and there are just a lot of good cards come together and like i said i think the tempo strategy is the main thing of what this deck wants to do and then when we look at the sideboard we see some weapons against super aggressive decks in the form of three mazes of ith there in the sideboard and also we see a few ways for him to go a little bit faster i know when he plays against a more um, you know, controlling deck like the deck, he will bring in his Whirling Dervishes, he can potentially bring in his Energy Fluxes to make it really hard to keep all those artifacts around for the opponent. And then, of course, he also has Psionic Blasts, and then, then there are those Divine Offerings for some life gain. What you see more and more now, and I think that's something that uh, Yoop is kind of tweaking with as well as sometimes he takes out a Disenchant, puts in a Divine Offering. Those are little things that you can tweak about. Also, the amount of Urnums can change, the amount of Sarah Angels can change. So um, it's not a set list, you know, this is a starting list, you could say. And then every time you, you tweak and you change, because you are playing with three colors. So it's a very uh, thin line that you're walking on. You know, a, a subtle change can make a big difference in this deck. And here we see my deck today. This is Timmy's Plane. So this is the deck I'm playing today. It's, it's a deck I've been working on for a while. I really love it. It's built around the combination of Protocol Sorcerer and Living Plane. So Living Plane, maybe it's a good... Thing to start with that card living plane is an enchant world from legends a green one that says all your lands are now one one creatures so not just my lands all the lands in the game are one ones including the lands of my opponent they keep their abilities though so they still tap for mana or when they're special lands like a loa still gives you a card if you've got seven cards in hand etc etc now of course the synergy here is pretty clear right when i have a living plane 
uh, on the battlefield and I have a protocol sorcerer on the battlefield, I can tap my Tim to deal one damage to any target and I can kind of start pinging down the lands of my opponent. So that's the key idea of the deck. Now you see this deck often being played with black for pestilence or and with red because obviously red is the direct damage color in earthquake for one wipes out all the lands or you can play a falling star you can take out six lands of your opponent if you're good at flipping so obviously red is a really good color to combine with living plane but i wanted to try to do it without red i wanted to see can i just keep it blue green alone and see how far uh, i can get you know that's one of the things so um, what I've tried in this deck is I wanted to just play a lot of one-offs to kind of keep it interesting and to also keep my opponent guessing. So for example, I'm playing with one IC Manipulator. I'm playing with, um, with one Siren Skull. Siren Skull, by the way, is super good when you've got Living Plane out because Siren Skull forces your opponent to attack with all the creatures. So when all the creatures are also the lands of the opponent, you know, your opponent has to choose, am I going to tap my lands for mana, but then lose them because if they don't attack, they get destroyed. Or am I going to attack and I probably lose a lot of lands because it's not really favorable for me to attack with everything. But they have to because of the Siren Skull. So Siren Skull is really good. Some people like to use Living Plane, Siren Skull and Sandstorm together, which is good. But when I was testing, I found out that just the Siren Skull alone in combination with Living Plane is already really, really bad for the opponent. Like it's usually... It's usually really bad, you know, when you're forced to attack with all your 1-1 one, one lands. You just don't want to do that. So I feel that Siren's Cold doesn't really need a Sandstorm to back it up. Um, talking about, because I was still talking about the one else, we've got one Giant Grove, which I love. Because people always expect you to play Giant Grove when you're playing green. And having that one off, if you use it in game one, they think, oh, he's probably playing a full playset. But actually, I'm not. The same thing goes for Counter Magic. Look at the list. There are no counter spells in here. I've been trying to, to find a space for uh, Mana Drain because I think Mana Drain can be quite good. Um, but there's no counter spell in here. So the opponent's probably going to think, oh, he's got a counter spell, he's got a counter spell. Well, no, I don't, but I will keep two blue up to keep you guessing, you know? So that's also really nice. Um, besides the Living Plane combo, it also plays the Ice Storm um, combination with, you know, turn one Lana or else turn two Ice Storm, which is going to give you some advantage. Uh, the cool thing is, if I have Living Plane on the board, I can actually use my Control Magic to steal lands of my opponent, which I think is hilarious. Um, I'm also playing with one Meek Stone. Meek Stone being quite good, of course, because I'm playing with really small creatures. I mean, check it out. My biggest creature is a Triskelion, which is a 4-4, but I can, of course, make that smaller if I want to. So Meek Stone in this deck works really, really well. Um, now, talking about Triskelion, by the way, Triskelion is a 4-4 for 6, right? But it comes to play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. You can take those counters off to deal 1 damage to any target. So, obviously, Trike is a fantastic match with Living Plane. It really works together well. If I can find a Trike and if I then find a Living Plane next, I play out my Living Plane and I can just take out 3 lands with a single Trike. That's just insane value. That is really, really, really good. Um, yeah, this is this is the deck. There are some more little synergies in there. Um, also, a little spoiler alert. I have changed my sideboard. I've taken out the two City in a Bottles. And one of the cards that I've put in, I believe, is an Old Man of the Sea. Because I love the idea of living playing an Old Man of the Sea. I can start stealing lands. Maybe I should actually play uh, Old Man of the Sea main. That's something I'm thinking about. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should play an Old Man main. I mean, it's such a beautiful card and it can be really good in combination with Living Plane. Um, I also put in... No, they're already Control Magic in, but I made some changes to the sideboard. So we'll just have to wait and see how the match develops and if we can see the current changes. It's always kind of hard for me because I'm constantly tweaking the decks and I hope you can understand that I don't always have the time to then make a whole new deck photo, but the main 60 are correct here of this photo. It's just a sideboard that I've had some changes with. Anyway, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of my opponent. That means we are ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Yoop sitting on the left. I'm sitting on the right with my Timmy's plane deck. So blue and green with a living plane taking on Urnum on ice of Yoop. And it looks like I've taken a mulligan here going down to six cards in hand. Starting with an island, so I'm on the play, passing the turn here to my opponent. Ooh, a library of Alexandria. That is a really good start. Let's hope I can find one of my ice storms here. There is a mox and as a response. Okay, ancestral recall. That's not too shabby. On the end step of my opponent. 
and drawing a card for turn. Let's see what I can do. There is a library as well on my side of the board. Wow, what a strong start from both players. Two Loas on the board, seven cards in my hand, passing the turn here. There's a strip mine though. Oh, so that's the end of my Library of Alexandria, I guess. Exactly, there's the strip. I'm gonna activate it one time, at least getting a card out of it, thanks to the Ancestral Recall earlier. And it's probably gonna be a pass for my opponent. He has to discard a card, discarding a Sylvan Library there. So eight cards in hand for me, well, nine actually. Now I'm gonna go back to eight and now I'm back to seven. Look at all that power. So I found an Ancestral Recall, a Library of Alexandria, and now a Time Walk in my first two turns. That's insane. Well, my first three turns actually. And I'm going into turn number four. There's a Pendle Haven, tapping three. There's an Ice Storm. Wow, this is great for me. I mean, look at this. Despite the fact that my opponent started with a Library of Alexandria, Look at what he has now. I've got three lands. He only has a Mox Ruby. This is fantastic for me. Can he find a land there? I mean, that would be pretty devastating if he cannot find a land. Just have to wait and see. I've got six cards in hand. We only have that one Mox Ruby. Okay, there's a Mishra's Factory. Oh, and a Black Lotus. Okay, here we go. Sarah Angel? No, there's a Argovian Pixies, a Lanawer Elves, and a Sylvan Library. I think that Sylvan is the best one of the bunch because that's going to help him refill his hand. And at the same time, look at the amount of power he's got on the board now. He can deal five damage a turn. So despite the fact that things were looking really good when I passed the turn, it looks like I'm a little bit in trouble again. I mean, a Tim would go a long way. If I can find a Prodigal Sorcerer here and keep it alive, that would be fantastic. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. I mean, this was a really good turn for my opponent. I mean, finding that Black Lotus, being able to accelerate this way. And that Sylvan is just really, really key because that's going to help him to refill his hand. He's still on 20. Okay, there's a strip mine. So at least that's some defense against the Mishra's factory. Am I going to use it straight away? That's the question, I guess. Tapping a green. Untapping again. There you go, tapping three. Do I have a Prodigal Sorcerer? There's a Prodigal Sorcerer. There's a Tim. Passing the turn. And there we go, my opponent drawing an extra card. Gonna go down to 16. There's a Savannah. Tapping the Savannah. There's a Swords to Plowshares. That's unfortunate though. In response, stripping the Savannah, but yeah, perhaps I should have stripped the Mistress Factory. I don't know. Probably going to get in for a lot of pain here. There's the attack. Taking five points of damage, going to drop to 16. Untapping again. Maybe I've got another Tim in hand and that's why I'm stripping the White Source. There's a Sylvan Library. This is tough though. So despite the fact that I had an Ancestral Recall, a Library of Alexandria, and a Time Walk in my first few turns, I'm still with my back against the wall here. I'm on 16 and he can hit me for five again. I would drop down to 11. This is pretty problematic. Here we see Yoop just taking one card. No, deciding to take two instead. Gonna drop to 12. I wonder what he's found. So there's another white source. And yep, attacking for five again. Do I have a crumble here? There's a crumble on the factory. So that's going to save me a little bit. Just taking three points of damage. Going to go to 13. And now there's the pass. Looking at the top three cards because of the Sylvan. 
I just need another Tim. That would be great because it, with the Tims, I can kill the two creatures on the side of my opponent and I can kind of take back control of this match. There's a uh, City of Brass. Tapping four, it seems, going to drop to 12. Control magic. Okay, so I can take over one of the two creatures. Going to go for the Lanawar Elves. Because my opponent's kind of light on mana, so taking away a mana source. Of course, a Lanawar Elves is tapped, though, so I cannot block it on the uh, Argovian Pixies. Now, remember, my opponent is playing with a playset of Disenchants. So I wonder how that's going to end. I'm expecting him to, of course, attack there. We see that Lanor Elves upside down on the side of Yoop, indicating that it's no longer his. He can attack me here for two, put me on ten. It looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. Perhaps he's got a disenchant. He's thinking, should I play it? There's a Mishra's Factory attacking for two here. Put me on 10. And he's going to do something. Yeah, there's a disenchant. Yeah, unfortunate for me. But at least I've slowed him down a little bit. I'm going to look at the top three, but now there's that Mistress Factory again. I'm on 10 life. This is really difficult. So really taking my time here to decide what to do. Taking an extra card. Okay, going full in here. Going to drop to six. That's a pretty big risk. Going to tap three. Do I have an ice storm, perhaps? There's an ice storm. Take out the factory here. Three cards in hand, it seems, and... Am I going to pass the turn here? That would mean three more damage. I would drop to three, so I would only have one last turn. Okay, there's a blue playing a Siren Skull. So forcing you here to attack with the Lunderer Elf. So the reason I'm playing the Siren Skull here, it's not great. I probably don't have a lot of other options. But I want to make it difficult here for you to, if he wants to use the Lunderer Elf for mana, it means he's going to die, you know, at the end of the turn. And I know that he's playing with Urnum Jins, which is four. So if he can have a land drop here and tap the, the Lunderer Elves, he can cast an Urnum. So that's why I'm playing this. Siren's Call, kind of trying to put him in a difficult position. He's finding a Pendlehaven here. Dealing four points of damage down instead of three because of that Pendlehaven. So I'm dropping to two. So just by using my City of Brass, I would half my life. Tapping six here. I'm going to go to one. I think this is a Triskelion. Okay, so the trike is not too bad. I mean, I feel like I'm playing on borrowed time when you're on one, but hey, I'm still alive. I can now kill the Argovian Pixies and the Lunar Elves. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that is not true because Argovian Pixies has this uh, weird text, right? It doesn't have protection from artifacts, but it comes pretty close to that. It says Argovian, Argovian pixies can be blocked by artifact creatures and prevent all damage that will be dealt to the pixies by artifact creatures. So I cannot kill it with a trike counter. So yeah, I'm pretty much toast. So game one here goes to earn them on ice. So wow, losing the game one, even after that insanely good draw I had at the start of the match. Remember that moment in the game where my opponent only had a Mox Ruby and I had three lands and more cards and uh, how did... Anyway, game one, at least it's just game one. We have game two and three to go. Go Living Plane! Game number two, here we go. So at least I'm still on the play, starting with a basic island and passing the turn. Let's keep my fingers crossed. Hopefully I can win this one and we get at three games. Let's see what my opponent can do here. There's a Savannah and a Mox Sapphire. 
into a soul ring are we gonna see an ice storm turn one no we're gonna see a sylvan maybe that's even worse so he's got four cards in hand now and i also found a sylvan so we both have our sylvans out but of course here Yup has a lot more mana than me and he's starting to turn here so he has the upper hand at the moment I'm expecting him to draw at least one extra card. Going to go to 16, probably. Exactly. He always uses those uh, Sylvans pretty aggressively. It's really part of his uh, of his plan. Playing a Tundra here, tapping four and... Oh, tapping five, of course, because that's a Soul Ring, not a Mox. There's a Sarah Angel here, turn number two. Yeah, I got to laugh a little bit because this is looking so bad for me. Oh, my God. And I already lost a uh, game one, even though I found all those powered cards. Hopefully I can find a Psionic Blast. I do have two in hand. What also would be nice is maybe a Mox, a land, and um, perhaps a Control Magic. Dropping to 16 here. Let's see what I can do with the extra card. There is a Tropical Island. Okay, there's a Mox. Tapping two for Time Walk. Okay, that is actually pretty good. So I'm going to take an extra turn. Oh, there's a regrowth on the time walk. Wow, this is glorious. This is what I needed. Now I can untap. Hopefully I can find or a Psyblast or a Control Magic to take care of this Sarah Angel. Looks like I'm going to draw two cards again. No, just keep it two to one here, staying on 16. Well, that was a really good turn for me, and now I'm starting my extra turn. There's a forest, tapping four. Okay, there's that control magic. And even if I can only keep it for one turn, even if my opponent's going to play a disenchant, which is kind of what I expect, at least it's going to save me four points of damage, with, which is a card as well with the Sylvan in play. Remember, I still have the time walk in hand that I can use at a later time. I mean, another line of play could have been take four damage, wait until I have an extra mana, and then, you know, play out Control Magic and Time Walk in one go. But I think this is better. And let's see what Yoop can do, if you can find Disenchant. I mean, if he can, that would just be a bonus. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here, exactly going to put... Cards back, just gonna draw one it seems, so staying on 16. Now let's see what he's going to do. I mean, there's always an element of luck in Magic the Gathering, right? Maybe he just can't find the, the Disenchant, despite the fact that he's playing with four and he's got the Sylvan. It has happened. He's going to tap four mana. Okay, what is he going to do for four? Maybe an Urnum Jin. There's an Argovian Pixies and a Disenchant. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You know, the longer it takes before you see the Disenchant, you start thinking, maybe he doesn't have it. But he does. He's going to strip my Tropical Island here, so I no longer have double blue. And I believe I boarded in two Control Magics, by the way, after game one. So I'm playing with a full play set of Control Magics in my deck. Because Yoop's deck is pretty, you know, creature heavy. And the Sarah Angel is a really nice target to steal, of course. Again, drawing two extra cards. Okay, going to go to 12. Playing a Tropical Island. Going to tap three here. For a Protocol Sorcerer, okay, then a Time Walk. That means that I can use the Tim straight away in my extra turn. I can ping down the Argovian Pixies. Gonna draw three more. Well, look at three more cards, I should say. Not gonna draw them. If I want all of them, I gotta take eight damage. I'm probably not gonna do that. Ooh, gonna take another extra one. Gonna drop to eight. So I'm using my Sylvan super aggressively. I'm really hurting myself here. There's a Library of Alexandria tapping six. There's a trike. Okay, so what I can do now is deal three damage here to the angel and then ping it for one, killing the angel. I don't have to do that straight away, of course. I can wait until it's my opponent's turn. So passing the turn here to Yoop. 
Wow, but I mean, look at my life total. I'm on eight. Probably if I'm Yoop, I would first go and attack and see what I'm going to do. Right, so she's going to draw the one card. I mean, things are still looking really good for him. If he attacks, what I'm probably going to do is deal three damage to the angel and kill it. The, the question for me here is, am I also going to block with my protocol sorcerer on the Argovian pixies? Because I can block and use the Tim, but then of course the Tim will die. So maybe I should just take the two extra points of damage here, go down to six and kill the angel. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing here. I think this is a good decision. I mean, it doesn't matter much whether I'm on six or on eight. I mean, I don't want to go to four because I believe Yup is also playing with Psionic Blast, so that's a bit more risky. Oh, look at that, another Sarah. Oh, man. That is so tough. That is so tough. Again, I'm being put in a difficult position where I have to find an answer again. Look at that. I'm actually attacking here with the trike, probably hoping that he's going to block with the trike on the Sarah. Maybe I've got another trike in hand and I can then kill the Sarah. Or maybe I've got a giant growth in hand. Okay, yeah, I had another trike in hand. Yeah, that makes sense. It's always nice to kind of see, you know, are you going to do something? Put your opponent in a difficult position because I cannot use to try to block anyway because of the Argovian Pixies. But now again, I'm in a difficult position because if he's going to attack, and probably he will with Sarah Angel and Argovian Pixies, I've got to make that difficult decision again. I really don't want to go down to four because he's playing with Psionic Blasts. There's the attack. It looks like I'm just going to do the same thing. going to drop to four, going to take the risk. If he now has a Psy Blast, it's the end of the road for me. Another Angel! That's his third Sarah Angel. That's just insane. Oh, man. Hey, at least I tried, right? At least I tried. This is how it goes sometimes. Uh, anyway. I mean, if I can find a Control Magic, I can survive one more turn. Tapping three. Oh, there's a Psionic Blast on the Angel. Oh, man. Attacking with two. Going to put him on 13. I can ping down the Pixies. But, I mean, I'm on two. Okay, there's an Ice Storm. And now I've got to choose between the Tundra or the Savannah. And I think I'm going to go for the Savannah. And this is, of course, a decision made on the fact that I know his deck quite well. So I know that green is really a big color, like for cards like Lana or Elves and Urnum. And I know that blue, of course, it's a, it's, he's got very good blue cards, but he doesn't play that many blue cards. He just plays the Power Cards and the Brain Geyser. So I'm going to give him the blue mana. I'm going to take away the green mana from him. And look at that, he's going to draw an extra card, drop to nine, four cards in hand. Okay, there's another Plains. I mean, I believe he's already lost three Sarah Angels. I hope that there's not going to be a Sarah Angel number four. There's the attack with the Pixies, pinging down the Pixies now. There's a Swords on the Protocol Sorcerer, so I'm going to uh, drop to three, or go up to three, I should say. Not drop, but go up to three life again. And I look at the top three cards, two cards in hand now. Of course, I cannot take any extra. Attacking with my 1-1 uh, one, one trike army. Oh, that is funny. Rearranging my lands. Using a crumble here. I wonder what I'm going to crumble. Targeting the soul ring. Now, this is quite important, right? Because I know that the Sarah Angel is five. So I want to get him, get him away from the five mana. I also know that an Urnum is four. So if he can find a green source now, we can still play an Urnum. But... You know, I want to try to slow him down here. I'm on three life. Yoop's on eight. So, I mean, just need a few more turns. Just going to pick the one card. Okay, this is actually quite good. The Mistress Factory. Now I wish I would have kept a crumble in hand. Perhaps that one card is another crumble, question mark. That would be quite nice.
look at that attacking with one of the trikes. Let's see if he's going to bite. Or is this a bluff? I, I honestly, I can't remember. I don't know. There is the attack though. Like he would drop to seven. Does it really matter? Okay, he's going to take the bait. He's going to animate. Now, do I have something? Do I have another crumble? Oh, there's a giant grove making it into a 4-4, killing the factory here. That is quite nice. And there's a pass turn. So now the factory is gone also means he's missing a land now. That's of course a problem with the factory. Yes, it's a super good card, but it's also a land. Ooh, look at this taking an extra card, dropping to four. That means he's on a two turn clock. But I'm still very much afraid of Psy Blasts. Two cards in hand now, of course, I cannot draw any extra cards. Attacking here, putting him on two. I just need one more turn. Or a Psy Blast. There's an Ice Storm on the Tundra, of course, passing the turn. Really trying to slow him down. He's on two. Can I now win this with my trikes? Keeping my fingers crossed here. There's a Mox Ruby. And only green cards in his hand. Oh, so taken away. That Savannah actually gave me the victory. Wow, that was a really, really, really good decision in hindsight. That was a, that was a good decision. And I'm really happy because it's 1-1. That means we're going to go into game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. The decider, Yoop, is on the play, starting with a Mishra's Factory, passing the turn. And I just realized that I haven't played a single Living Plane. So maybe I can make that work here in game number three, starting with a Pendlehaven, tapping the Pendlehaven into a Lanara Elves. That is a pretty good start for me. Maybe next turn I can play an Ice Storm. Passing the turn here. Let's see what my opponent can do. Usually has some accelerators. There is a Tropical Island tapping two mana. There's a Time Walk. Okay, that's really good for him. Taking an extra turn. And he's already on the play, so already had that tempo advantage. So now he's going to double up on that. Does he have an Ice Storm? That would be pretty brutal. Yeah, there's the Ice Storm. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at my board now. One measly elf taking the turn. Finding a tropical island, tapping two here. There is a Simbad. Okay, so Simbad, a card from Arabian Nights. I can tap it. Look at the top card of my library. If it's a land, I can put it in my hand. If not, I discard the card. And that works really well with a Sylvan. But I'm so far behind now after that time walk and of course that ice storm. There's an Argovian Pixies and Elanover Elves. Just a lot of smaller creatures here. If I can find a Timmy and I, can, and I can get it to stick to the board, that would be ideal. There's a Forest. Tapping three. Will there be a Protocol Sorcerer? That's really good. Yep, there's a Tim. Now the question is, can the Tim survive long enough? That's usually the problem. I'm expecting a Swords to Plowshares here on the Tim, but who knows? If he doesn't have it, it'll be great. Also has a lot of mana now. If you can find another Sarah Angel, that would be pretty problematic as well. It really feels I'm... Uh, I'm behind here in this uh, game number three. But I'm still on 20. Attacking here with both. So going to take three points of damage. Probably going to drop to 17. So he's going to keep the Pendlehaven, of course. Oh, he needs the mana. There's a Sarah Angel. Going to use my Simbat. Can I find a land? Oh, ouch. This is painful. I'm milling away my own Ancestral Recall. And this is where Simbat really, really hurts. It can be a great card, but it can be such a killer card. I've taken the risk. Oh, but an Ancestral Recall could have gotten me back into the game. Going to use Simbat again. Going to lose an Ice Storm. That is also pretty bad. Ice Storm would have been great against the Factory. 
Wow, so so far Simbat is not doing a lot of work for me. And I still haven't found a land. I probably need lands, right? That's probably why I keep using the Simbat here. Oh my goodness. This is so bad. So I'm on five cards in hand, 17 life. I mean, the best scenario for me, assuming there's not a land in there, is the Psionic Blast on the Angel and now using my Protocol Sorcerer in the main before he untaps with the Pendlehaven, exactly killing the, um, the Lunara Elves here, passing the turn. I mean, this is just not good for me. I can't believe I just milled my own Ancestral Recall. That was very painful. I was going to animate the factory, go swing in with the team. I really need a Psionic Blast here. Okay, at least I have a Crumble. Am I going to block? No, I don't. I really want to keep the mana from the Lanora Elves. Going to drop to 11, four cards in hand. Finding another Tropical Island. Do I have a Control Magic? Please give me a Control Magic. I need to steal that Sarah. Tapping. Tapping four, question mark? Yes, I am. I see manipulator. Mm. Not the worst, but not great. The problem is there that they don't have an extra mana to and tap the Sarah Angel. If it can find now also a Meek Stone, for example, and I could keep those Sarah's tap, that would be quite nice. But for now, I'm I'm in for more pain because he's going to attack with the Sarah, of course. Playing a Savannah first. A full play set of Savannahs there. Beta Savannahs. They look absolutely stunning. There's the attack with the Argovian Pixies as well. Going to kill the Pixies with the Tim. And I'm going to take four from the Angel. Drop to seven. And I'm going to use the Simbad again. Hey, it's a land. It's a good one. It's a Maze of If. That's actually quite useful. That Maze is pretty good. So now I've got an Icy and a Maze. So I've got some weapons against creatures. But I'm on 7 and my opponent's on 20, which is kind of nuts. But if it can play the maze, if it can kind of take it easy, you know, wait until I maybe draw into a control magic. Going to tap 4. Do I have a control magic already? Yeah, there's a control magic. Okay, that's quite nice. So I probably I found the maze with the Simbat and probably top decked the control magic. Now those are two fantastic cards to draw at this stage in the game. And, and look at the hand of my opponent. He's only got one card in hand. Am I going to attack here with the same bat or use it again? Looks like I'm going to attack here with the same bat. Going to put him on 19. And pass the turn. I mean, what I wanted to say is my opponent is top decking at the moment. So if he can't find a disenchant, every turn it takes longer for him to find a disenchant. It means four more damage. A card that I'm really afraid of, actually, right now, is Balance. Balance would be absolutely horrible. So I'm going to put Jupiter on 18 with that ping at the end of the turn. Now, I could just attack with Lunar Elves, Simbat, and the Angel, deal 6 points of damage. I could even attack with the Tim, and then after damage is dealt, untap it with the Maze. So I'm going to attack here. No, I'm going to use... The Simbat, I'm going to lose my Lanora Elves here. I think it would have been better to just attack, deal six points of damage. Also, I could have attacked here with the Tim and untapped it with the Mace. So I'm, I'm playing pretty sloppy here, to be honest, missing some points of damage. And that can be decisive. You know, how many games are decided on, on one or two extra points? Going to put Yoop here on 12. Not quite sure why he tapped the Pendlehaven. Perhaps I tapped it with the Icy Manipulator. That's probably what happened. Playing an island here. So I should just attack him with everything, right? Deal 7 points of damage. Put him on 5. Untap the Tim. And step put him on 4. That's what I should do. So probably right now I'm taking so much time because I know that I'm winning. 
so I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> Sometimes these turns take long because of that. Attacking here for six, putting him on six. So look at that. So I'm being very conservative. I want to keep my Mace of If untapped. I want to keep my, my Icy mana available. Let's see if he can find a balance here or a disenchant, he can find a sorts. So he can sorts the angel. So I'm gonna be put on 11. So that's gonna buy him one more turn. I mean, a sorts is bad, but the disenchant would be far worse. Ooh, and look at that, he's playing a Lanawer Elves. And I'm going to ping him up to five. I'm going to play a Psionic Blast in his end step, put him on one. And then, of course, I'm going to kill him with the Tim because that's what I love to do. Wow, winning this game number three, there were really moments in the game where I thought, I am so not going to win this anymore. So I'm really surprised. Remember that start of the game where he played the Time Walk and he played the Ice Storm and I only had a Lunar Elves on the battlefield. I, I think what this match really shows just looking back at, at the entire match, is that even if you have a bad start, just continue playing, keep believing in it because you can still win the game and sometimes even the match as you can see here. So I'm really happy that Living Plane uh, has done well. Obviously, I you know needed some luck, but you always need luck in these games. That's an integral, integral, how do you say that? Anyway, it's an important part of magic. That's what I'm trying to say. And there's a complicated word for it that I cannot pronounce. Okay, <laughs> anyway, winning here with Timmy's uh, Plane. I wanted to say Timmy's Spellbook, but this is, of course, Timmy's Plane. Thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I would like to ask you to like, share, and comment on this if you enjoyed the content that I make. These are three uh, steps that are completely free, really easy to do, and really help me to grow the channel and show YouTube that people enjoy my content. So by liking my videos, you're telling YouTube that you like what I do. And then YouTube says, you know what? We're gonna show you uh, in some more feeds. So please uh, leave a like, comment, and share this on your socials. And then there's one other thing that you can do, and that is uh, join Timmy Talks, the Patreon program. And that's a way to support me as a content creator financially. So if you like what I do, and you want to help me continue making these videos, consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And one of the nice perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including uh, this one. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.